Alrighty then, let's just get into it. Hello, I am the Aromantic Shipper, and this video is going to be covering part two of my rewrite of the Walking Dead television series. This video will of course be covering the Governor arc all the way to the execution of Gareth and the Cannibals, and in order to understand some of the things I talk about in it, there's some context that you would only be able to get if you watched the previous video, so please go watch the Walking Dead rewrite part one on my channel before you watch this video. And of course, major spoilers for both the Walking Dead TV show and the Walking Dead comic by Robert Kirkman. With all that out of the way, let's just get into it. So, last time in the previous part of my Walking Dead rewrite, I basically took the first four episodes of season three of the original series and stretched them out into a 14 episode season, changing a lot of the things and adding a lot of new content. The governor arc of my season four will have much less drastic changes but there will still be some important ones, and my season would round out to 15 episodes in total. Alrighty then, let's just get to it. Alright, so in episode 1, the group at the prison see the helicopter crash several miles out, and Andrea thinks that they should go check it out, but the rest of the group is hesitant. However, Andrea thinks it's worth the risks, and goes to find it along with Michonne, which means events in my rewrite happen more similar to how they do in the comics, just with different characters, obviously. However, before they do go, Andrea goes into the prison to tell Rick, before Rick, not in his right mind, attacks her and slams her to the wall like he does to Glenn in the original show, after which she just decides to leave. Michonne and Andrea catch up to the helicopter, but the governor shows up first, and other than them not questioning why he would be stabbing the guy in the head, the scene would play out as it did originally, with Merle first reappearing and capturing them, but Michonne wouldn't kill her two walker buddies in my rewrite. I'll explain uh, why I kept them around much later. Meanwhile, at the prison, everyone is recording. Everyone is recovering from the rebellion, while Rick is going completely commando on all the walkers inside. And I also think it would be pretty cool if Rick's carnage was shot like a horror movie, but with him being the monster and the walkers being the victims. Uh, the governor would take Andrea and Michonne back with him and question them, with Andrea saying that they were surviving out there alone for months, only this time she would be lying, unlike the original show. He would then introduce them to his town, Woodbury, with Andrea being quite impressed. Back at the prison, Rick would, of course, find his wife's corpse eaten, eaten by walkers, and then he would wreck all of them, and the episode with, would end with him hearing the phone ring. In episode 2, it would focus mostly on the introduction to the governor. As in the original, he acts all nice and friendly, with the townspeople seeming to like him, and Andrea taking a liking to him as well, though she isn't crazy about the cage fighting, of course which is shown earlier than in the original show. Michonne is suspicious of him, though, but she doesn't yet have any evidence that he's actually a bad guy, and when he goes out on a run, he leaves Merle in charge of watching Andrea and Michonne. He, of course, questions Michonne about his brother, and he, have, you know, he of course, questions them about his brother, and in a way, Andrea tells him the truth, saying she doesn't know since Daryl is... Daryl's survival is still in question at this point. Cut back to the prison where it shows Rick still talking on the phone, and a reverse role, in a reverse role of the original show, Carol actually finds Daryl in the room he was locked in with the walkers. Everyone is pretty shocked to see he survived and managed to kill every single walker without a scratch, but covered in reeking blood and severely dehydrated. Daryl then finally asks if he can take a shower. Like the original, Rick realizes that he is talking to dead people on the phone. I see dead people. And Herschel tries to bring him back to reality. Oop, there goes gravity. I'm sorry. Uh, back to Woodbury, Andrea notices how Merle is acting a lot more relaxed than he used to. Than he used to, and he tells her that he's now off the meth, and then starts telling her how much of a great guy the governor is, with him saving his life and helping him recover when he didn't have to. We, we then see examples of the governor being a real swell guy out on his run when he comes across Tyrese, who I introduced previously in season 3. Out of supplies, his daughter ends up dying from lack of nutrients, and she comes back as a wa walker and rips the throat out of her boyfriend holding her dead corpse. Similar to the comic book, this is when Tyrese and his crew first figure out that you can, that you can turn from dying from any cause, and the governor then pulls up and puts down his daughter and her boyfriend, saving Tyrese, Sasha, Karen, and David. Tyrese begs them for help and says they'll do whatever they can to earn their keep, and completely contrasting Rick's decision last season, the governor says he'd be happy to have them and points them the way back to Woodbury. Seems like the governor is a pretty nice guy until he gets to the destination of his run, the military base. He says that he has one of their comrades that was in the helicopter, starts eyeing all their attractive supplies, and asks if they would be willing to join his community and earn their keep. After the 
After they say no, he launches a surprise attack, kills all of them, and then the episode ends. In episode 3, it begins with the governor getting back to Woodbury, spewing his bullshit lies, and then the opening theme plays after he sits down looking at all his, all his severed heads. The episode would focus on Michonne becoming more and more suspicious of the governor, snooping around for clues about his true nature. She sees what looks to be the governor handling a little girl through his window, but at this point it isn't revealed that it's actually Walker Penny, unlike in the original series. Andrea, on the other hand, finds herself becoming more and more fond of the Woodbury community and its citizens and really starts to bond with some of them. She also talks to Di she also talks to Tyrese and his group who recently arrived, and after Tyrese tells her about a crazy guy he met on the road with a pregnant woman, Andrea is able to piece it together, and she gets even more pissed off at Rick, who condemned Tyrese's daughter to death. And in her eyes, Rick isn't even redeemable at this point. In my rewrite, rather than Andrea not knowing where Rick and the group are, she is well aware and thinks that Rick is a total psycho. She tells Michonne that they should just stay at Woodbury and bring everyone else there too, and let the surviving prisoners have the prison. Rick lost his mind, the prison is damaged and full of walker parts, and three people just died in it. To Andrea, Woodbury represents what Dale wanted, its civilization and hope. But Michonne says that if something seems too good to be true, it usually is, and she leaves Andrea to go back to the prison. But the governor, realizing that Michonne and Andrea were definitely not just surviving alone in the woods, because they barely had any supplies on them when he captured them, but were still well-groomed and fed, tells Merle to follow Michonne to where she's going back to and kill her before she gets there. At the prison, Rick confronts the two, the only two uh, surviving prisoners, Axel and Oscar, and, said that, and says that they can live at the prison, but he will still keep an eye on them, and they need to do what he says. But after Oscar saved his life and he is told about Axel trying to save Lori, he does trust them more now. Rick is reunited with his son Carl and daughter Judith and tries to work out his issues when he is told that Michonne and Andrea still haven't returned yet. With Daryl still recovering and Rick wanting to secure the prison, Maggie and Glenn decide to go out on a run, not just to get baby formula this time, but also to find Andrea and Michonne and bring them back, and then the episode ends. In episode 4, things play out pretty similarly to how they do in the original show, with Michonne killing a bunch of Merle's men and uh, him giving up the search, but he does manage to retrieve her two walker buddies and bring them back to Milton, and then later finding Maggie and Glenn and capturing them. He now realizes it definitely wasn't a coincidence finding Glenn and Andrea so close to one another, and brings them back to Woodbury for questioning. Back at Woodbury, we get scenes of Milton trying to study the walkers like in the original show, but with the added detail that the military beasts that the military base that had the helicopter seemed to have all sorts of useful documents relating to research on walkers that Milton can use. More on that later. Also in the comic book, Dr. Stevens, who Milton fills the role of in the show, has an assistant named Alice, and I would actually add Alice into the show for reasons I'll get into later. Also, we see Lizzie and Mika at Woodbury since their characters kind of just came out of nowhere in the show. Uh, meanwhile, Michonne, injured and covered in drying walker blood, makes it back to the gates of the prison. Carl is the only one uh, near the gate besides Carol, and he risks his life to save her. Michonne then tells Rick about what happened and Merle trying to kill her. And after Maggie and Glenn still don't return by sundown, Rick suspects that they may have been captured and makes a plan to go after them. Meanwhile, back at Woodbury, Andrea starts having sex with the governor, and then it cuts to Merle about to interrogate Glenn, and the episode ends. In episode 5, the governor continues to try to pr poke and prod information out of Andrea as to where she was staying, but Andrea continues to stay tight-lipped in, res in respect towards Michonne. Also, I would have an added scene of Sasha admiring how good Andrea is with a rifle and asking Andrea to instruct her, which will be important since after Andrea dies, Sasha will essentially be taking over her role in the series as the badass sniper. Afterwards, the governor says that they are going to have to use more brutal methods to find out where their camp is, since Andrea won't tell him. And so, just like in the original show, Myrtle beats Glenn half to death and brings a walker in that almost eats him. Then the governor goes to interrogate Maggie, but unlike in the original show, where he only threatens to rape Maggie, in my rewrite we are going with the uncensored version where he actually does rape Maggie, multiple times, like he does to Michonne in the comic books. After Maggie tells him to go to hell, the governor says, A small part of me was hoping you'd say that. I think it would be a good decision to have the governor actually go through with raping Maggie, as it would showcase the true depths, depths of his depravity and also give Glenn more of a reason to really want him dead. Meanwhile, Andrea is still in Woodbury, hanging out with everyone there, completely unaware of the horrors taking place in secret. Rick leads his crew to Woodbury, finding their people, and to find their people, and the episode ends with the scene where the governor is combing his walker daughter's hair. In episode 6, things play out pretty similar to how they did in the original show, with the group rolling up and barging into Woodbury, and getting Maggie and Glenn back. 
The governor is, of course, trying to keep Andrea as far away from the action as possible because he still wants her ignorant in Woodbury, but Rick and the group are still looking for her to bring her back. In the end, Andrea goes against the governor's warnings, joining the fight and shooting Daryl in the leg for the third time, yes, it's a running gag in my rewrite, before realizing it's him. However, Rick, who still has a bit of crazy juice in him, starts seeing things, like his friend Shane with a beard, and then tries to shoot and kill Andrea, thinking she's just another enemy. Since Tyrese is at Woodbury at this point in my rewrite, he would also see Rick and what he's doing. Oscar also ends up getting shot, but not lethally in my version, because for real, the writers couldn't even have one of the prisoners live past nine episodes. No, in my version, Oscar lives much longer, and he asks, and when he asks to be left behind, Rick tells him that he isn't going to do that, and that he's one of the group now. Oscar saved his life, and he is saving his. However, Daryl, who still has a bum leg, doesn't make it back to Rick and shouts at them to just go, so that he can at least see his brother now. Then the governor and Michonne have their conversation, but they don't break the Walker had fish tanks like in the original since the infection can spread through the bloodstream, and Walker juice should have gotten all into their cuts. Also, Michonne destroys the governor's eye and also cuts off his arm like in the comic book. Like I said, we are going with the uncensored version here. And Andrea walks in with a look of horror on her face. Then the episode ends with the governor hospitalized from his injuries and the men chaining up Daryl. In episode thing, things... In episode 7, things would play out much like how they do in the original show, with Andrea questioning the governor about what was going on, him lying like a bitch. And, but Andrea half-believing him, since she just saw Rick trying to shoot at her, people getting hurt and dying in the attack, and her friend Michonne was carving, up, carving him up like a goddamn tauntaun. But then, of course, he forces Merle and Daryl to fight to the death, and Rick and the group help both of them escape like in the original series, with Andrea just confused as what to do. The other citizens of Woodbury are also j as confused and scared as to what to do and will and what will happen next, with the governor not in the condition to really be his governing self, uh, and people starting to leave Woodbury, fearful of a third attack. Andrea, of course, steps up like in the original series and tries to calm everyone down. Meanwhile, Rick and the group try to make it back to the prison, Merle with them, but just like in the original, Rick knocks him out because he is too goddamn annoying. Daryl then decides that he will go with Merle and keep him out of trouble, but Rick reminds Daryl that he promised to be his right-hand man and stay loyal back to him back in Season 3. Daryl simply responds by saying that Merle is his blood and he has to go with him even if he can't, if he can't be at the prison, even if he's a total asshole. The scene would obviously be sadder in my version with how we got those interactions between the two in Season 3. Then they would all get back to the prison, Glenn finding it near impossible to process that his girlfriend was raped, and the episode ends with Rick seeing visions of Lori. In episode 8, Rick would continue seeing his visions of Lori, Oscar would still be recovering from his gunshot wound, Maggie would uh, break down telling her father that she got raped, and there would be some other stuff at the prison as well. For instance, I would add a scene of Rick asking Michonne if Andrea, Andrea betrayed them, Beth talking to Carl about how it's great that no one was killed in the mission, but Carl telling her that the that the group probably killed quite a few people at Woodbury. Then Car then Carol would jump into the conversation. I almost confused Carol with Coral. Coral. Carol. Coral. <laughs> then Carol would jump into the to their conversation, talking about how killing is necessary for survival. Beth would say that she doesn't think she could ever kill someone, and then Carol and then she asked Carol what it was like killing that prisoner back in season three, and she would respond by saying that she felt the same way about it as she felt bashing Ed's rotting head in. In the moment, it was a horrible experience, but in retrospect, it was one of her fondest memories. Damn, Carol. Back at Woodbury, the governor would compliment Andrea on her ability to calm the masses, but then dig into her for lying about being alone with Michonne, as he knew that she was with Rick and the group. Andrea would beg him not to attack, and he promises, but of course he plans to attack anyway, and tells Milton to keep tabs on Andrea. Things with Merle and Daryl go about the same as they do in the original series, with Daryl going back... Uh, to Rick and Merle following him. Then the episode ends with Axel getting shot in the head by the governor while trying to flirt with Carol. I was debating whether to keep Axel alive for longer, but I think keeping Oscar alive is enough since I have a concrete plan for where I want to go with his character while I don't with Axel, and the governor killing him out of nowhere really serves to establish him as a legitimate threat. And let's just say it won't be the last time he shoots someone from afar out of nowhere in my rewrite. In episode 9, of course, the attack on the prison goes the same, Merle and Daryl uh, going to save Rick and Rick and the governor busting open the gates to let in a bunch of walkers. Andrew has his talk with Tyrese and his crew, 
sorry, Andrea has a talk with Tyrese and his crew, admitting to them that uh, she used to be with Rick for a while, but doesn't condone his actions at all. Tyrese is, of course, the most understanding of the bunch, but questions what made Rick so messed up. And Karen and David, especially Sasha, are not happy at this revelation, and she... And she tells her that if uh, she had the chance to kill some of them while they attacked Woodbury, she, she should have taken the shot. Then the governor gets back to Woodbury to lie like a bitch to Andrea again, but in my rewrite, Andrea is an actual proactive character and has already escaped by threatening Milton to let her take Michonne's jawless walkers to go back to the prison. The reason I'm so intent on keeping these walkers alive has to do with stuff I'll get into later, but also because in my rewrites the walkers actually have consistent behavior and Michonne's walkers are super valuable because it takes a long time to train them not to attack you, even with their jaws and arms removed, so you can't just find a brand new walker and have it give you camouflage like Andrea Andrea does in the original series. Then, of course, Andrea makes it back to the prison and is told about all the horrible things the governor has done, and the group, especially Glenn, is determined to kill him, but Andrea is adamant that the conflict needs to be resolved peacefully because there are lots of good, innocent people at Woodbury who are loyal to the governor. She says that she will act as a mediator between the prison and Woodbury, having lived in both, but like in the original series, Michonne confronts her, saying that she chose a nice life in the suburbs over a friend. In episode 10, we actually see how Andrea managed to set up the meeting between Rick and the governor, and the lengths she went to to see it happen, with Rick and especially the governor incredibly pissed off at her, unlike in the original, which we just, it just happened off screen. Uh, things play out relatively similar to how they do in the original show, and it is here that Carol suggests to Andrea that she should slit the governor's throat after seducing him. I would also make some additions to Rick and the Governor's dialogue, like the governor telling Rick that he wa he just wants his people to be safe and to be loyal. And killing rival groups who wouldn't join him in the past worked towards that end, but Rick's group and their involvement with Andrea could jeopardize that. In my version of events, the governor actually uh, truly does consider making peace with Rick, unlike in the original show, but he simply can't let Michonne go because of what he did to him and his daughter. He also tells Rick that uh, he must have done horrible things so that his groups could survive just like he did. I'm really trying to hammer home the similarities between Rick and the governor in my rewrite and make it seem that there really was a way to avoid this conflict after all. Rick responds by saying, Yeah, I've killed some people. My right hand man has tortured some people. I've never raped someone. Then the governor responds by saying, Why do you people talk about rape like it's the worst, most unforgivable crime imaginable? The man who beat the Asian boy half to death is sleeping under your roof right now. Compared to Merle, what I did to the girl was a slap on the wrist. The episode would end with the governor's ultimatum to Rick to give up Michonne, or they can have no peace. In episode 11, I would tie plot lines from a few episodes together before getting to the Morgan stuff next episode, significantly reordered. Rick would talk uh, with his inner circle about the possibility of giving up Michonne. Herschel would be, would be against it because it's the wrong thing to do. Glenn would be against it because he wants to kill the governor. Daryl would be against it because it would be a, a, it would be a betrayal to Michonne, who's been a loyal member of the group. However, of course, Merle would be for it, explaining in detail all the bloody, sexual, disgusting things the governor would do with Michonne, and telling him not to bring that upon his own family. Oscar actually ends up agreeing with Merle, saying that Rick has to do what he can to protect his family. In the end, the Rictatorship is still going, and Rick says that he will think on it before making a final decision. Herschel would talk with Glenn about meeting, about making up with uh, Maggie, and he and Maggie would repair the relationship their relationship as in the original series and would have sex again for the first time after the governor raped her. Also, I would have the scene where Carol is talking to Merle while he is in the cell be much more intense than it is in the original and have her threaten and kill him if he ever mentions her daughter again. Also, it is Carol who fires the gun in the prison to calm everyone down rather than Beth who did so in the original series because that was just kind of out of character. Uh... <clears throat> And back at Woodbury, Milton finds the governor's torture tools and becomes really uncomfortable, which Andrea can see, so she threatens Milton again, and he reveals to her that the governor gave a deal to Rick to give him a shown, and he is going to use the tools on her. But Milton tells her that killing the governor isn't the answer because he has Martinez and the two other guys who are loyal to him to the end, and would just attack the prison anyway. However, Andrea realizes that she can't simply have a peaceful solution when her friend is in danger, so she takes Carol's advice, asking the governor to sleep with her. This time, she actually does try to kill the governor, but the governor stabs her with a knife he hid, asking her if, asking her if he thinks she's an idiot. Sorry, if uh, she thinks he's an idiot, and tells her that he went and tells her that she went to the prison and heard Rick's side of the story, so she would never sleep with someone who raped one of her friends. He then knocks her out and ties her up in his little torture chamber, and the episode ends. 
In episode 12, we finally get to the Morgan subplot depicting the events of Cleared from the original, with Rick remembering back in season 3 how he went to Morgan's neighborhood and saw all the traps and signs, assuming that someone had to live there who might have firearms. I honestly wouldn't change much, but the episode would have even more tension in it uh, than the original, as Rick is still considering whether he even wants to fight against the governor or just give up Michonne, who, for the first time, is actually opening up and bonding with Coral. Also, a significant change I would, sorry, a small change I would make is that the picture that Carl grabs would have Shane in it too, for reasons I'll get into way down the line. And finally, one small touch I would make in the episode is that in the comic book, when Rick goes to see Morgan much later, he finds Dwayne chained up at his house as a walker. I would add that into this episode and have Rick kill him for Morgan after Morgan tells Rick, I told you I was weak. In episode 13, it would start out with the governor trying going to torture Andrea only to realize she escaped. Just as in the original show, the governor would be trying to rouse the people's support for war, but Tyrese would take major issue with going to attack the prison, since he knows there are innocent people there, and it's just Rick that's crazy. In my version of the story, it's actually, it is actually Tyrese that burns the walkers, and the governor allows him to stay at Woodbury with Karen and David, but Sasha chooses to enlist in the governor's army, saying that it's necessary to protect everyone. She's more of the gung-ho type, uh, at least more clearly in my rewrite. As in the original show, the governor goes after Andrea to retrieve her, but this time he doesn't come alone, and he brings several of his goons with him. However, Andrea, who managed to snatch a sniper from Woodbury before leaving, starts picking off the governor's men one by one, even with her stab wound still affecting her, and she almost kills the governor, but he manages to retrieve her and bring her back to Wood and bring her back uh, to Woodbury before she makes it to the prison. When the governor makes it uh, back to Woodbury, he figures out that it was actually Milton who let Andrea escape. Back at the prison, just like in the original sh show, Rick is uh, talked into not uh, giving Michonne to the governor, but the episode ends with Merle taking matters into his own hands and knocking her out to deliver to the governor. In episode 14, it starts out with the governor uh, pulling Milton down to his torture chamber, tying him up, and making him watch as he drills holes into Andrea's limbs and rips out her fingernails like Michonne did to, go did to the governor in the comics, telling them that he has a meeting to attend to, and hopefully Rick will have come to his senses and delivered Michonne to their meeting place by now so that he can do the same things he did to Andrea to Michonne while she watches. Then things progress as they did in the show, with Merle deciding uh, to let Michonne go and sacrifice himself to take out a bunch of the governor's men and almost kill him, and then dying. And uh, Daryl seeing his walker corpse, uh, Glenn proposing to Maggie, though in my rewrite, Herschel gives Glenn his dead wife's ring that he retrieved back at the farm in season 3, so he doesn't have to propose with a ring he got from a walker. And then we get Rick's speech about how we are the greater good, but it will hit harder since Michonne was actually a part of the group by that point, and not someone who they had known for like a few days maybe in the original show. Michonne questioned why he even wanted to save her in the first place, as they had never been close and she barely interacted with anyone the whole time she was in the prison. Rick says that he might have killed her, but he trusted Andrea, and she trusted her. And after he saw her interacted with Carl back there, that was when he knew he couldn't just give her to the governor. Rick also adds in a comment asking if she had a kid before, uh, based on how she was acting around Carl. Rick, who's been seeing visions of his wife Lori for a while now, goes back to talk to her on the phone before acknowledging that he, it isn't real, and smashing the phone in bits. The governor uh, tries to make Milton kill Andrea, uh, but then after he tries to kill him, he leaves him out bleeding to turn, uh, saying that uh, he trained Alice well and she can still provide him with the services he needs. And the episode ends with the governor arriving at the prison with all his soldiers. In episode 15, things play out uh, very similar to how they do in the original show, with the inhabitants of the prison using clever tactics to win and causing all the new recruits of the governor to want to retreat. And Carl shoots the young man. However, the governor guns them all down, except for Sasha, who survives, and in my rewrite, the governor doesn't just leave afterwards, but instead he goes back to Woodbury. Andrea is struggling to use the pliers Milton left for her to get out of her restraints before Milton turns, and it makes more sense why she wouldn't be able to now, since, you know, all her fingernails got ripped out. Meanwhile, now that the governor is uh, back at Woodbury, he tries to convince everyone that Rick is the one who killed all the new recruits, and that the prison group won't stop until they've killed them all. But in my rewrite, the defeat of the governor is actually a political one, as Rick shows up with Sasha, who was saved by the new recruit walkers by Oscar, and she tells all of Woodbury about how the governor slaughtered them all, and so the governor retreats from Woodbury, losing his popular support. Then Rick and the crew go to find Andrea, and in my rewrite, she is actually still alive, and managed to kill the Milton Walker in time. 
So good for her. With the citizens of Woodbury confused and scared, she would step up to show them what the governor did to her and give a speech to them about how they have, have to stay strong and come together as a community and that Rick's group and them don't have to keep fighting with one another and there can be peace. But then, as it looks like she's going to become the new leader of Woodbury, the governor shoots her from afar in the chest by surprise, killing her, and thinking that if he can't have Woodbury, no one can, ordering his remaining loyal men to burn Woodbury to the ground, which they do, though clearly having some second thoughts about it, and that all the citizens flee. This would give Rick an actual reason to let the uh, residents at Woodbury stay at the prison, unlike in the original where there was really no reason at all. Michonne and everyone mourn Andrew's death, and the end credit scene shows the governor being abandoned by his remaining loyal crew and on his own. So let's address the elephant in the room. Yes, in my version, Andrea still does die like how she does in this, the original series. I did make some changes to give Andrea a lot more badass scenes in my rewrite and make her character more likable and proactive and give her a much less cheap death scene that was more shocking. But honestly, after reading the comic book, it's pretty ridiculous that the show killed her off so early with how badass and important she becomes. With that said, I do still think her death in the series was integral to Michonne's character and fitting Andrea into the story going forward until, like, the Whisper arc where she dies in the comic books would just require drastically changing too much. So yes, unfortunately, Andrea would still die in the season finale and the governor would kill her. Alright, now we're on to season 5. That about does it for my rewrite version of season 4. Now let's just get into the Season 5 rewrite, which will be covering Episodes 1 to 8 of Season 4 of the original series, and I would ultimately end up adding 3 more episodes to flesh things out, resulting in an 11 episode season. I wouldn't really make any major alterations with the plot of this season. Uh, I think the flu arc is honestly really great and very underrated in the original, and much more interesting than the stuff going on at the prison in the comics before the governor showed up anyway. And uh, then seeing what the governor has been up to before he attacks the prison is cool, but of course I do have some changes, so yeah, anyway, let's just get to it. This is my season 5 rewrite. Alright, so in episode 1, things would play out pretty similar to how they do originally, though with some added scenes showing how the previous citizens of Woodbury view Rick as a leader, since they know he was the enemy they had been fighting before and how they have been settling into life at the prison. Also, I would change up the timeline a bit. They have been staying at the prison for a lot longer in my rewrite. Winter has come and passed in the time skip, and is going into spring, which means that nearly two years have passed since the outbreak began. Also, since Karen and David are married in my rewrite, and are merely Tyrese's good friends, Tyrese and Carol actually get together in my rewrite. I think this would make sense, as later on they do sort of act like mother and father to Lizzie and Mika, and I think Carol killing Tyrese's friends would be actually even more devastating to him since uh he is in love with her and also you know the two do get together in the comics so there is a basis for it another change i would make is that in the comics maggie and glenn actually try to have a baby but it doesn't work and i would actually implement that into the my rewrite rather than having uh glenn be afraid of maggie getting pregnant like in the original series uh, also, let's talk about Bob. In my opinion, in the original show, Bob just sort of seemed to come out of nowhere. Like, he's there, and is just a major supporting cast member, I guess, despite being, uh, despite never being introduced beforehand. This speaks to a major problem I have with The Walking Dead, which is that it often gets very trigger-happy with killing off its characters, only to panic later and introduce new characters to fill the void. In my rewrite, the prisoner Oscar, who is still alive, will be taking over most of Bob's role in the series, but Bob will still make an appearance because I refuse to let anything go to waste. In the episode, Rick meets that uh, crazy woman who tries to kill herself, and it's made clear what she's doing with her husband being a walker that she's keeping, since in the original series, it was kind of confusing what was actually going on, and of course, Rick is shown uh, trying, trying to show his son Carl, or, sorry, I mean Coral, <laughs> another way besides violence, like in the original series. Uh, also, Rick gets back and talk to, talks to Herschel. Uh, you know, he tells him that the woman he... Uh, Matt was just too far gone, uh, but Herschel consoles him, saying that we are not too far gone, and we get to come back. Oh, the sadness. <laughs> at the run, uh, at the run that Daryl and everyone else goes on, uh, things go about the same, only of course Oscar is there instead of Bob, and Sasha actually goes with him, and we see the two of them bonding, with her thanking him for uh, saving her from the new recruit walkers back in the season 3 finale. It is him who used to have major troubles with alcohol, and then we get a flashback of him uh, back when he had, a, back when he was with his family, but the roof, but the roof collapses and the episode ends there. 
In episode two, Beth's new boyfriend would, of course, get eaten alive. And when Daryl's, Daryl uh, returns to tell her, she doesn't just say, I don't cry anymore. She also says that she has just accepted the fact that uh, this is the way things are now. And it's pointless to get sad because more people she cares about will probably just die in the future. The kid who gets the sick dies and reanimates and kills some of the uh, prison residents, just like in the original series. Then there is a discussion between the council members about what to do, and of course I introduced Alice as Milton's assistant last season, a pre-established character who will take up the place of the non-established doctor that randomly shows up in the original season. Lizzie acts like a psycho around the walkers, however, I would actually add some stuff with her. In the comics, after Alice makes it back to, back to the prison, she tries to experiment with the walkers, tying one up and convincing everyone that it's safe. I would add uh, this to my rewrite and have Lizzie going over to talk to Alice. Alice would tell Lizzie that she is trying to study Walker behavior with Milton back at that she was trying to study Walker behavior with Milton back at Woodbury, as he was convinced that some part of the person still remained within the Walkers. This would be the catalyst for Lizzie thinking that Walkers are people and being distraught about how her, her father's head was, you know, being destroyed after uh, he gets bitten. It would show her playing with the walker that Alice has tied up before Carol shows up, grills Alice about endangering everyone by bringing it in, and then as a big fuck you to virgin comic book Carol who commits suicide by that walker who was tied up, Chad show Carol would put it down. Carol and David seem to be contracting some flu symptoms and the episode ends with the fences outside starting to give way. In episode 3, Rick manages to keep out the walkers from the prison, and Tyrese goes to see his friends Karen and David, finding their charred bodies. Tyrese would freak out at Rick and fight him like in the original series, but in my rewrite, there would actually be more weight behind it, as Rick and Tyrese have shared history, with Tyrese having a lot of pent-up aggression, screaming at Rick about how he is the reason his daughter died, and how he would have helped his kid if the situation was reversed. In the original show, Rick and Tyrese's fight just kind of came out of nowhere, and I think that they only added it because, you know, the two f do fight each other in the comic books as well. Of course, Rick turns his face into shit, and more people st start getting sick, including Sasha, who Oscar seems particularly worried about. Then all the sick people are separated from the healthy ones, like in the original series, and the episode ends with the group making a plan to go out on a run to get supplies that might help everyone get better. And Herschel gives his iconic speech about risking one's life for the sake of others. <clears throat> In episode 4, Rick would investigate Karen and David's deaths. The scene where Rick saves Carol while she is outside trying to fix something with the water was honestly kind of confusing in the original series. I would just cut it out, because I don't really think it's needed, and instead have scenes of Carol trying to calm everyone's nerves and console them about what's going on. You know, her being the quote-unquote den mother of the group, and then Rick questions her about killing uh, Karen and David, and she says yes. She did it. Uh, now, this is where I would start making some significant changes uh, to the original in regards to the content outside of the prison anyway, as I would still keep everything going on inside the prison pretty much uh, exactly the same as in the original. Oscar, Daryl, Michonne, and Tyrese would go out uh, on a run like they on a run to get medicine like they do in the original show, while Rick tells them that he is going out there with Carol to look for medicine too, and that they should meet up together around the same spot. In the original show... Uh, Daryl's group ran into this incredibly massive walker horde on the highway out of nowhere, and in my opinion, this scene was completely wasted in the original show, as nothing really comes of it. It's actually based off of events that take place in the comic book, though after the prison falls, and is the very first time the group encounters a herd of walkers, so it makes for one incredible first impression. While the group in the show has obviously encountered a massive herd of walkers before, th so this scene isn't nearly as impactful, uh, I would still make this Walker Horde much more important in my rewrite and pull from a lot of the aspects of the comic book with, with an extended sequence of the group trying to escape the Walkers. The Horde is a major problem after uh, Daryl's group's car gets swallowed by it and a good chunk of the episode is spent trying to deal with it. Also, when Tyrese is when Tyrese is stuck in the car refusing to get out, I would have Daryl say to him that even though he lost Karen and David, he still has Carol who cares about him because I'm just fucked up like that. And also Sasha too, I guess. Uh... Yeah, <laughs> kind of forgot about her writing this. Uh, the, the episode would end with Daryl's group trying to make it uh, away from the massive walker horde and Rick driving away with Carol and the audience wondering what he's going to do to her. 
do with her, I guess. Uh, in episode 5, it will cut back to the prison with Herschel trying to do everything he can to save the flu victims. When he's questioned by Alex, who, Alice, who is looking to be in pretty bad shape, why he's so confident that he won't get the flu, he, said that, he says that he contracted a similar strain to this variant when he was younger and almost died from it, and so he thought he might have built up some immunities towards it, since there should probably be some kind of explanation given as to why Herschel is tending to a bunch of sick people and doesn't get sick himself. And also, the information would be divulged that this particular flu, tr flu strain is actually more dangerous in adults rather than kids, who usually make it through fine, to explain why Lizzie is able to make it out okay. And meanwhile, back to the plot going out on outside the prison, Daryl and his group would be trying to get away from the walker horde, but there's just nothing they can do to shake it. And Rick and Carol would have their little chat about what happened and what's going on, points to any fans who got that reference, and then they meet up with the two people like they did in the original show. However, the two people they run into aren't the two we see in the original show. Instead, they run into Bob and his girlfriend. Bob is the chipper, upbeat guy we see him as after the prison gets wrecked in the original series, while his girlfriend is much more untrusting of Rick and, Rick and Carol. And she also has a bad leg like the woman Carol and Rick found in the original did. Rick asks them, the, asks them the questions, and then he has a little talk with Carol. And in my version, he actually asks Carol uh, what she wants to do, rather than just sending her away like he does in the original. Rick tells her that if he, she stays at the prison, she would have to own up to what she did to everyone and to Tyrese and be imprisoned. You know, since it's a prison. But uh, she also has the choice to go off on her own and make her own way outside the prison, with Rick secretly coming out to meet her every so often in a particular place and making sure she's okay. Carol ultimately chooses the latter and goes away, uh, not wanting to face uh, anyone with what she's done, before Daryl and the others meet up with Rick. And unlike uh, with those two people in the original, Bob and his girlfriend don't immediately die. Uh, the episode would end with Daryl and his group running back to where Rick is, trying to avoid the giant walker horde that's still chasing them. In episode 6, we would, still, we would get some more scenes of Herschel back at the prison, like in the original, and Maggie and... Carl on the other non on, and the other non sick outside trying to fend off the walkers at their gates. This episode would mostly focus on Rick and everyone uh, outside on the run. After Daryl's group meets up with Rick, everyone is in total confusion as to what to do. Daryl, Tyrese, Daryl and Tyrese are demanding to know where Car where Carol is, with Rick trying to come up with an excuse. But they still didn't get the medicine they came for. And when Oscar makes it back to Rick and sees. Uh, Bob and his girlfriend, it turns out that Bob's girlfriend is actually Oscar's wife, who he had assumed had just been killed in the Walker outbreak all this time. He's incredibly happy and also heartbroken seeing her all this time with another man. She is confused and conflicted about him, and Bob doesn't know what to say, and everyone is just fucking confused, all the while there's a massive horde of Walkers coming right towards them. Rick slips back into Rick Tatorship mode, getting control of the situation and making everyone there bend to his plan about how to get the medicine and make it back to the prison without the herd following them back there, since the fences are struggling to hold as is. He implements the plan and makes Bob and his girlfriend go with him, go along with it, and uh, help him at gunpoint, saying that they can come back with him to the prison they are staying at and be safe if they help him. And then Oscar can uh, vouch for him telling the truth, but Oscar is conflicted about whether he should help Rick and save everyone at the prison, or go off with his wife, or ex-wife now. His mind flashes to thoughts of Sasha and how she could be dying at this very moment, and he ultimately decides to help with Rick with his plan. Rick tries to uh, derail the path of the wa Rick, you know, Rick trying to derail the path of the Walker Horde plays out pretty much like how it does in the comic book. Only this time it works to a point, but uh, we will see this hurt again, don't you worry. And the group is also able to go and get the medicine they need, but Bob's girlfriend ends up getting tripped, uh, up, uh, tripped up by her bad leg and eaten by walkers, with Oscar being incredibly distraught out as he just saw his wife die mere hours after meeting her again after assuming she was already dead. This episode ends with the group making it back to the prison, plus Bob and minus Carol. In episode 7, things would play out much like how they do in the original series, with episode uh, 5 of season 4, Internment, being honestly one of the best episodes in the entire uh, series, in my opinion. Very underrated. Herschel would try desperately to save as many people as possible in the prison, with Alice biting the bullet, and a bunch of prison residents turning into walkers, and actually being fast, you know, unlike in the original series, where one was, like, slowly walking towards Lisa... Very slowly, baby steps. Maggie goes back into the prison with a mask in my rewrite, because, you know, you got to protect yourself from the Rona. Glenn and Sasha make it out alive. Rick and Carl do some father-son bonding, killing all the walkers getting into the prison. Good, clean fun. And then all of the prison residents who died are buried. 
Rick would hand Carl back his gun, and the, and the episode would end with, uh, not with the governor looking at the prison, but instead with him coming out of nowhere and knocking out Michonne and pointing a gun at Herschel, capturing them. In episode 8, we would of course transition to the governor flashbacks, as in the original series. I would honestly not change too much about the first flashback episode outside of a few things. Of course, since I already wrote the governor burning down Woodbury and his crew picking up and leaving him in season 4, it wouldn't happen in this episode, and it would simply start with him walking around on his own. Since there was a bigger time skip in my rewrite with another winter having passed by, this would give the show the opportunity to showcase some beautiful snow in the flashback episode with the governor. Snow is so fucking gorgeous, man. You gotta show it more, Walking Dead crew. Also, I would add a scene of the governor contemplating suicide and him smashing the jar of fingernails that he ripped out of Andrew on the ground, clearly horrified by what he had become in the previous season. And then things would play out pretty much like they do in the original show. He finds Tara, Lily, and her daughter Megan and forms a genuine connection with them over time, really seeming like he has turned, o- turned over a new leaf and cast his old life and who he was behind. Then he falls into the walker pit with Megan and saves her, even more impressive in my version since he's only working with one arm. Then he meets Martinez in the episode, uh, and the episode ends with Morales uh, deciding... <clears throat> no, wait. Yeah, <clears throat> no, not Morales. The episode ends with... Uh, what the fuck am I writing? The episode ends with uh, Martinez deciding to let the governor uh, stay in his group, and the governor eyeing how many people and supplies he has with him. In episode 9, things play out pretty similar to how they do in the original, with Tara and Lily getting acclimated to the new camp, and the governor seizing his chance to kill Martinez and Pete, and manipulating Mitch to gain control for himself. He would manipulate the masses into believing that they are in danger of dying at any moment, and I mean, technically they are, uh, and we would see him scout in the prison, waiting for the right moment to try to reclaim it. However, I would actually introduce something in uh, this episode that wasn't a factor utilized in the original series. Just like Daryl's group her- hears the message from Terminus playing on the radio, people from the governor's camp also hear the message and come across a few signs pointing towards Terminus, a place where people can survive and thrive. Many in the camp would want to take their chances with Terminus as they are vulnerable and running low on supplies. However, the governor would convince them not to, saying that they don't even know what the s- what the signs are promising is true, and for all they know, the people at Terminus could just be inviting people to kill them and take what they have, which of course would turn out to be true, but the governor is really just saying that because he is still obsessed with taking the prison, and he tells the people at the camp that he knows a surefire way to bring them all to a safe haven, but the road to getting there would be dangerous. The episode then ends with things catching up to the present, and the governor capturing Michonne and Herschel. In episode 10, the governor would convince the camp that they can take the prison for themselves with the hostages he grabbed like in the original series. More scenes would be added to the prison with everyone trying to recover from the flu. There would be added scenes of Rick introducing Bob to the community and telling him about the situation uh, with him grieving over the death of his girlfriend and Oscar also grieving about the death of his previous wife. And the two share a scene uh, talking to each other about what it about it and what it meant to them. Later, of course, Sasha would be able to reunite with Oscar saying, uh, uh, You know, telling him how thankful she is for getting the medicine that saved her and saying, I'd kiss you if it wasn't for, well, you know. Tyrese would be going crazy thinking about Carol being out there all all on her own and would get even more angry at Rick for seemingly leaving her out there and not going back for her. Also, in the original, Tyrese discovered something in the prison that was bloody and... uh, made him convinced that there was a psychopath living with them in the prison, the same one who killed Karen and David. But uh, even going back and watching episode 8 of season 4, I can't tell what it was, and they don't really explain it. In my rewrite, in my rewrite, I would just have it so that Tyrese discovers uh, one of the people who had the flu and turned into a walker had their throat slit, uh, with, with, with it, of course, being secretly Lizzie that did it, uh, trying to end their suffering and uh, bring them back to life. Back at the governor's camp, I would actually add quite a few more scenes. Michonne would question why the governor had to kill Andrea and tell him that even if this hostage hostage exchange goes well, she is just going to come back and kill him later as she can never forgive him for what he did. The governor would admit to Michonne that he now thinks knows his daughter Penny was dead, and this is where we finally get to the payoff of my decision to keep Michonne's jawless walkers alive up to this point. The governor would thank Michonne for forcing him to let go of his past by killing the Penny Walker and vows to return the favor finally killing the two jawless walkers that she goes around with for her, after which she breaks into tears. 
And then the governor apologizes to Michonne for everything he did and to Herschel for raping his daughter, saying that he's a changed man and that he simply wants uh, his new family to survive. And Herschel has a conversation with him, begging him to let the prison go. But then trouble appears as a bunch of walkers suddenly raid the governor's camp, killing quite a few people and forcing them to flee. That With the episode ending with the governor then giving a speech afterwards that this is exactly what they need and why they need the prison to be safe, and they have no other choice but to take it now. Also in the chaos, Michonne would manage to escape, though without her sword, just like in the comic book. In episode 11, things would play out uh, quite similar to how they do in the original Too Far Gone. However, things... However... Things do have some changes. In my version, the episode starts with the governor rolling up to the prison on uh, prison fences on top of on top of a tank with his new new recruits. Uh, some added dialogue from him saying how he knows the sickness has just dealt Rick's people a massive blow, and they also used most of their ammo fighting back the walkers, so they're in no position to fight. The governor definitely planned to attack them while they were at their weakest. In my rewrite, also much like the citizens of Woodbury, Rick would. Uh, try to turn the governor's people against him and start telling them about all the horrible things he's done, but the governor would tell Rick to watch his mouth since he isn't the one who has a hostage with him. Also, in my version, Lily and Megan are not back at their camp, and the governor actually brought them onto the battlefield, saying that they are safer there with everyone around to protect them, especially with Michonne and the loose. But in reality, the governor wanting a tactical advantage, uh, since he would be counting on Rick not wanting to endanger the lives of, of a mother and child. Since Michonne escaped, it would show her behind the trees observing the situation while the governor lies and takes out her sword, asking if Rick wants him to take her out too. Because I always just found it weird in the original episode that the governor was so set on making sure Pegleg Herschel was dead, rather than, you know, killing the super deadly samurai warrior who he just let get away to then stab him in the chest later. Just really weird. Uh, but yeah, in my version, she's just escaped and watching the situation from afar. There would be more scenes of both sides anxiously anticipating what happens uh, and hoping that it doesn't come down to a fight and that their respective leaders will negotiate successfully, really building up that tension. Things would play out the same with Rick's plea to, plea to the governor, but then him chopping Herschel's head off, and then all hell breaks loose. Rick gets shot through the abdomen just like he does in the comic book. There's an added scene of Tara's girlfriend telling her that they have to fight not for Brian's sake, but because they simply don't want to die. And, of course, Lily trying to console her daughter, who is witnessing the battle play out in front of her. Finally, after the governor beats the shit out of Rick and sees everyone running, he, procla he proclaims, The prison is ours, before promptly getting stabbed by Michonne from behind, who says, That was for Andrea. The dying governor tr turns to see Megan and Lily, both horrified, and then behind them, thousands of walkers coming out of the woods. That's right, the walker herd that the group met on the road and thought they had shaken was still sticking around and had been drawn by all the gunfire. Walkers then start raiding the prison. We see Lily crying over the governor and telling, uh, and trying to help him, but Michonne tells them to get the hell out of there if they don't want to die. It shows the governor getting torn apart by walkers while he's still alive, and then Lily gets torn apart by them, and then, finally, so does Megan. All the awesomeness that happens in the original episode still happens. Daryl blowing up the tank with the grenade, so cool. Anyway, uh, then, <laughs> then Rick tells Carl to just keep walking, and the credits roll. The end credits scene would confirm that Judith did indeed survive, and it's with Tyrese and the girls. All right, so that is it, the end of season five of my rewrite. I didn't make as quite as many changes as uh, to the original source material as I did the season four, but there were still some important ones. So then, after the absolutely brutal finale of Too Far Gone, now we get into eps uh, now we get into season six of my rewrite. Season six would be composed of fourteen episodes in total and cover the ninth episode of season four of the original show all the way to the third episode of. Season 5 of the original show, uh, which I feel would make for a proper finale as a wrap-up to the Cannibal story. Since the back half of Season 4 of the original show was already pretty slow-paced, all, all three of the added episodes of my season, of this season in my rewrite would, would be extending the first three episodes of Season 5, which I feel were very rushed through in the original show. Anyway, let's just get to the rewrite. Here we go. Right, just let me see if this is recording. Gotta take a drink of water. Mm. Stay hydrated. Anyway, in episode one, things would play out very similar to the events of the original show. Uh, it would focus exclusively on the escapades of Rick and Carl. Sorry, I mean Coral. 
uh, with Rick, with Rick trying to uh, recover from his injuries and Coral trying to protect his father and himself and Michonne being haunted by her past. Though, uh, the, though there are actually flashbacks to Myri, right? Rather than like hallucinogenic dream sequences that she has, you know, I just think it would be better to make it a bit more clear what was actually going on uh, uh, in her past than, you know, we see in the original show. The episode would still end with Rick's line to Carl saying, it's for you. Uh, I would still make some minor changes. I would cut out Carl's line where he tells Rick, I'd be fine if you died, which seems completely out of character for him. And also considering events that will happen much later when Carl is yelling at an unconscious Rick, blaming him for what just happened. Uh, I would have him being mad about the fact that Rick didn't just take the governor's offer to leave the prison, shouting, It's your own fault for being so damn stubborn. We could have just left. We could have found another place. Then maybe everyone still be would still be alive. Maybe Herschel would still be alive. Maybe Judith would be alive. But now everyone might be dead because of you. Because you made the call to stay. Also, it would focus on Michonne trying to train and pacify the walkers, uh whose limbs and jaws she removes, but uh, because, of course, in my rewrite, it takes a lot of time to get them to not attack you, which would put her at risk, and she would ultimately just decide to kill them, symbolic of how she's moving on from her past. In episode 2, things would play out a little differently to how they do in the original show. I am going to be reordering a lot of the events that took place in the original episodes, as I think that the placement of the stories of each of the characters were not that great in the original series, and sometimes got either jumbled or bogged down. Episode 2 of my version would only focus on two plot lines, unlike in the original, which tried to jumble four. In my rewrite of season 5, Bob, Sasha, and Oscar would actually be the ones on the bus, uh, with all the other people from the prison, unlike in the original series, and the episode would, uh, <clears throat> and... And the episode would open on them stopping on the side of the road. They try to figure out what th their next move should be, where they should go, how they're going to get food, and whether they should uh, go back to see if uh, everyone, anyone else is alive at the prison. Sasha sh says that they should just be lucky to manage to uh, that they managed to get as many people out as they did, which just completely jinxes them. As immediately after that, a herd of 100 walkers shows up on the road and swarms the bus. The engine won't start, and and it is shown in great and gory detail every single person in the bus getting eaten alive, except for Bob, Oscar, and Sasha, who Oscar manages to pull on top of the bus with him, as well as the other NPC dude who ran off into the woods at the sight of walkers. Uh. The opening theme plays, and it cuts to Maggie trying to get back to the bus as quickly as she can, coming from the prison, and then when she gets there, she sees the scene that has just unfolded. She manages to distract the walkers uh, towards her, and <clears throat> then Bob, Sasha, and Oscar are able to make it off the roof, and they all manage to run away while dropping most of their supplies. Maggie's told that Glenn got off the bus. They go around the woods back to the bus to get... Uh, to put down uh, the people from the prison and get their stuff, and Maggie demands they go back to the prison to search for Glenn, if he wasn't on the bus, and then look for Beth afterwards. Meanwhile, it cuts to Glenn back at the prison with things pretty much playing out like how they do in the original, managing to escape with the help of Tara, and uh, her trying to make up for her mistake of siding with the governor. When Glenn passes out on the road, Tara takes off his riot gear so that it doesn't overheat, and then after she manages to kill the walkers, Abraham shows up. Maggie and everyone else then get back to see Glenn's riot gear, and Maggie thinks that the fresh tire tracks that stopped right by him where it was left are related. But Sasha tries to stop her from going after him, saying that she has no idea how far away the truck could be now, and running ragged all over the place isn't a good idea when they are outside with no protection. Sasha is also recovering from having the flu, so she isn't really in the best shape to be running around. But Maggie is completely determined, and Sasha follows her reluctantly, along with Bob and Oscar. Meanwhile, it cuts to Glenn uh, waking up with Abraham, and their first conversation goes about the same as it does in the original. Eugene accidentally downs the truck, and then Glenn and Tara go off with Eugene telling Abraham to follow until they get another vehicle. Meanwhile, back with Maggie and her group, she is still following the tire tracks from Adri Abraham's vehicle, while Sasha demands that they stop, and says that she doesn't even know if Glenn is on the truck. And even if he is, he is probably 100 miles away by now. She then says that the reason uh, she was separated from her husband in the first place is because she left the bus in the prison to get her sister, and then Glenn went back to the prison to find her, and that they just needed to stick together now. Bob and Oscar are more understanding of her wanting to find her husband, but Sasha says that she needs to stop and rest. Reluctantly, Oscar stays with her uh, while Maggie goes out alone, uh, while well, Maggie goes out uh, to follow the tire tracks, with B and Bob goes with her. And the episode ends with them coming across signs saying to go to Terminus. 
In episode 3, it would fo- focus exclusively on the escapades of Beth and Daryl and Tyrese and Carol. Tyrese would, of course, be trying to take care of Lizzie and Mika, with Lizzie acting like a fucking psycho and trying to sh- choke Judith, and then Carol would show up and save the day. Like the hero she is that never does anything wrong. Uh, and the guy Tyrese found who got spit, who get bitten, uh, sorry, who uh, gets bitten, tells them about Terminus. They follow the train tracks. Uh, Lizzie acts like a complete psycho around some more walkers, and they get to the house that they stay in at the original. Meanwhile, Beth and Daryl are seen trying to escape uh, walkers while it cuts to a flashback of Beth saying how it might be strange, but the prison is actually seeming like a nice place where they could, where they could stay for the rest of their lives. I would make some significant changes to the Beth and Daryl content, as while it had some good stuff in the original, some of it was downright, just downright weird and fillery. Uh, in my version of events, Daryl hasn't lost hope and is actually trying to have Beth reunited with her sister, but Beth says that Maggie's probably dead, just like her father, and that she will never see her again. This pisses Daryl off as he shouts to her, Why the hell do you people assume just because someone got lost that means they won't that means you won't see him again? Andrea came back, Merle came back, the governor came back. You just have to put some damn effort in to find people. But Beth is clearly s- severely depressed. There are scenes of them trying to make it through the area to gather supplies and survive walkers, and later Beth disappears and Daryl finds out that she hanged herself like Maggie did in the comic books. But Daryl manages to cut her down and retrieve her in time. After this, he is extremely pissed off at her, asking, What the hell is wrong with you? As they simply walk off to the next location in silence. The episode ends with Lizzie playing around while that walker chases her. In episode 4, it cuts back to Rick, Carl, and Michonne as Michonne starts to bond with Carl, opening up uh, with him about her past uh, while (coughs) while they scavenge for supplies from houses together. Things play out pretty much like they do in the original show, with Rick getting trapped on the, under the bed and strangling that guy to escape, and him and Carl and Michonne managing to get away. They see the signs deciding to go to Terminus, and the episode then ends with them tiptoeing down the railroad tracks, having fun while the claimers close behind them. Anyway, in episode 5, it focuses yet again on Maggie and her escapades, and Glenn and his escapades. Since Bob is new to the group, there would be scenes with him talking to Maggie and her questioning why he's even helping her, considering he just met her. He says that he likes how determined she is to find her family and wants to help her because he can. Meanwhile, back with Oscar and Sasha, he is caring for her, and Sasha complains about Maggie leaving them. But Oscar tells her that it is good that she's trying to find her husband. If he had actually tried to find his wife, rather than just giving up and assuming she was dead, maybe he, she would still be alive. Sasha says that he, she is worried sick about her brother and wants to find him, but she has to hold on to the people she has with her right now, rather than losing them trying to find others. Then a group of walkers show up and raid the place they are staying at, with them going onto the roof for safety, and with them thinking it might be over, Oscar finally confesses that he does have feelings for her. Then they kiss, and uh, Maggie and Bob, who came, who came back, end up saving them. Maggie tells them that she couldn't just abandon them, but she hasn't given up, given up on Glenn, and tells them about the signs she found leading to Terminus, and that her plan is that she will help them get there to Sanctuary and equip herself with a working vehicle, if they have one, to go f- to find Glenn, while also leaving signs for Glenn to go to Terminus if he does come back. Back with Glenn and Abraham, they also find signs saying to go to Terminus, and they make the same plan to uh, rest up there and hopefully obtain another vehicle, and Glenn reluctantly goes with them, thinking that Maggie might have followed the signs as well. And then, back with Maggie's group, Bob, who is always a happy-go-lucky guy, congratulates Oscar and Sasha for getting together, and then Oscar has a conversation with Bob, saying he doesn't resent him for getting, it, for getting with his wife. He chose to assume she was dead, and she and she did the same, and he realized that he was still holding on to her after all that time, and wanted, to, and that he wanted to find happiness with someone else before he died, just like his wife did. And he can finally express his feelings for Sasha now that he has clarity that his wife is dead. The episode from there plays out like how it does in the original, with Glenn intersecting Maggie's path, finding her message to go to Terminus, and ends with Maggie and Glenn finally being reunited in the tunnels like in the original. Also, Tara doesn't just randomly injure her leg, uh, in episode 6, we would focus on Beth and Beth and Daryl and Tyrese and Carol again. With Tyrese and Carol's story, things pretty much play out like how they do in the original, beginning with the scene where they find the burned walkers that, in my rewrite, are walking away from a re- recent forest fire. Lizzie kills Mika, and in my rewrite, Lizzie breaking down and crying isn't because she thinks Carol is mad at her for pointing 
important to get a gun at her. Instead, it's because Carol puts down her sister Mika after she promised not to. Then Carol puts Lizzie down, only with one small addition I would make is that the shots that are used to portray Carol putting her down are an exact replica of the shots used when Rick put Sophia down in season 2 to serve as a direct parallel. Then Carol admits to killing Karen and David in the house to Tyrese like she did in the original, and since the two are in a relationship in order to rewrite, Carol tells him that if uh, he is in no, in no way required to love her after this, and that if he needs to kill her for what she did, then she will let him. Tyrese says that he doesn't love her anymore, but he does forgive her. Meanwhile, back with uh, Beth and Daryl, Daryl confronts Beth about trying to kill herself, and Beth asks him why he cares what she does, saying, I'm an adult, and I can do what I want. I'm not your responsibility. Then Daryl pushes her to the ground, telling her to shut the hell up, and she starts coughing up blood as Daryl broke one of her ribs, reviving her with CPR before. Rather than in the original series, where a significant portion of the episode still was spent on Beth trying to find something to drink, instead, Beth and Daryl just stumble onto a place with alcohol in my rewrite and get drunk together. Then things pretty much play out exactly like the last 15 minutes of the original episode, still with them uh, playing the drinking game. Daryl finally breaking down, Beth uh, saying that Daryl will be the last man standing, a bit of a uh, small bit of added dialogue with Beth saying that Daryl didn't belong in the previous world, which is why he's so good at surviving in this one, and the episode would end with them uh, burning down the house and uh, flicking it off. A happy ending for Beth and Daryl, contrasting the incredible sadness that came with the Carol and Tyrese plot. In episode 7, the plot would pretty much be a wrap-up of a lot of the loose ends of the various uh, different stories that we have been following so far. Beth gets injured by the bear trap, and Daryl carries her to the house. It gets raided by walkers, and unlike in the original episode, we actually see what happened to Beth as she is saved from getting eaten by walkers by two police officers who suspiciously, who suspiciously show up just in the nick of time. It is more clear in my version how they did, uh, like, intentionally... Uh, set up a trap there to lure them out and uh, capture people. They knock her out and stuff her in the car with a cross on it, and Daryl chases chase it until he drops. He then meets up with the claimers, and things uh, go pretty much like how they do in the original, with them using his tracking skills to try to catch up to Rick. Carol and Tyrese decide to leave uh, the house and go to Terminus together. Maggie, Bob, Sasha, and Oscar decide to go to Terminus with everyone, and then help Abraham with his mission. And there's an extra scene of Bob talking uh, to Tara, with them bonding over the fact that they are both pretty upbeat people who just recently lost uh, their significant others. Glenn, Maggie, and everyone else manage to make it there, though they don't just uh, walk into the place like in the original. Instead, they are made to go through checkpoints and then asked to hand over their weapons, and then the episode ends. In episode 8, the episode starts out like A does in the original show, with a flashback of Herschel talking to Rick about how he still has his humanity, before it cuts to being covered in the blood of his victims. After the opening theme plays, I would just have the flashbacks to the prison played in the beginning as one, rather than being spread out like in the original episode. With Rick, Carl, uh, <clears throat> when Rick and Carl come across that guy in the woods who gets eaten by walkers, this time it's not just some random guy, and it's actually the guy from the prison who ran away from the bus in episode two, and someone that Carl knew, making his fate even sadder. It also shows more scenes of the claimers trying to catch up to Rick uh, with Daryl, and then of course the claimers roll up and things play out exactly as they do in the original, but with one minor change I would make. When Rick rips out a guy's neck in the comics after he says, what are you going to do now, sport? It makes it it makes a little more sense there, as he is quite a bit skinnier in the comics and only working with one hand, and there isn't really much else he can do against the guy. But surely two-handed Chad TV show Rick would uh, have done something to handle Joe in the show, uh, like choking him. Uh, in my rewrite, I would have another claimer straining Rick, holding his arms behind his back, so that he really can't do anything about it against him, and then as Joe gets up real close to his face, he bites his throat out. Then, of course, Rick and Daryl have their heart-to-heart, -heart and they make it a terminus. With... Then Rick holds a gun to one of their heads, saying, where the hell did you get this watch? And then the episode cuts to a mysterious figure in a raincoat showing up, showing up at the prison and killing walkers with a staff. And then the episode ends. In episode 9, it would start out with the flashback of Gareth that we see in the beginning of No Sanctuary of the original series. After the opening, we see uh, <clears throat> Rick, Michonne, and Carl in the same situation as in the episode, the end of episode 8, and then it will cut to Carol and Tyrese hearing the gunshots from Terminus and, that, and them capturing Martin. The Tyrese and Carol stuff will be seen at the same time as the stuff with Rick and the group is happening in my rewrite, rather than as a flashback like in the original show. After a longer sequence of Rick, Michonne, and uh, Carl trying to uh, 
escape then in the original they get cornered and are forced to go inside the train car and get reunited with everyone Rick says they're fucking with the wrong people and they prepare to escape with everyone asking Eugene questions about how he would be able to stop the walkers before Rick gets hauled away unlike in the original where it happened after he did this would also uh, give an opportunity for some callbacks to season one with Rick telling Eugene that he went to the CDC in Atlanta and, and uh, Dr. Jenner said that nobody knew how to cure the infection but then Eugene defends himself saying that no one knows how to cure the infection, but people are very close to creating a disease that will target and kill all the walkers. It would spread through the herds and take, out, t take all of them out easily. Carol hatches a plan to rescue them, and Rick gets hauled away to be slaughtered. Uh, two more people are with him uh, than in the original, though. Oscar and Tara. Since Bob is uh, a much more expendable character in my rewrite, and Oscar filling much of, the role, much of his role in the original, after Gareth says that you can't go back, Bob. He gets a bat to his head and his th throat slit, which would be a real shocker, and the people of Terminus would seem much more threatening after just killing a really likable character, who seemed like he was becoming a member of the main cast, uh, like it was nothing right off the bat, rather than just some random dudes that they killed. However, two of those random dudes from Car B are people that Terror recognized. The guy with the bat is about to, ki is about to kill Rick, but stops when Carol creates the giant explosion. And then Gareth says that someone is attacking and there's no way they are going to let their sanctuary be taken from them again. And then the episode ends with another flashback from the original No Sanctuary, where Gareth says that you are either the butcher or the cattle. In episode 10, it focuses on the group trying to escape from Terminus, of course, but with some added sections. The stuff with Tyrese and Martin is the same, meaning meanwhile the stuff at Terminus is significantly extended. After mowing down a bunch of cannibals, a lot, of the time, a lot more time is dedicated to trying to get the train cars open. <sighs> rather than how easy it was in the original series. After they manage to free their group in car A, the walkers start pouring into the location. However, Tara demands that they stay and help the other people out of the other cars, and reveals to Rick that she was with the governor at the attack on the prison, and that she recognized two of the people that the cannibals slaughtered back there because they were part of her group, and that there might still be people she knew trapped in the train cars who fled from the prison and wound up at Terminus, which many people were considering uh, going there before the governor talked them out of it and she begs Rick to try to save them. Rick's memory of seeing her was pretty foggy after the governor beat the shit out of him, and, Tara tells, and after Tara tells him this, he freaks out and starts threatening her. But Glenn vouches her, for her and says that they still have to be good people and save the people in the train cars. They first open Car C and uh, the psycho leader of the group that uh, attacked Terminus the first time comes out saying, We're the same! Before a bunch of walkers show up and eat him. Uh, it looks like it will be impossible for Rick and the others to open train car B now with so many of the walkers around and Terminus getting more and more dangerous. And Rick just wants to leave them there, especially since they don't know if the people in there could be crazy like the guy in car C. Abraham also wants to go, but Glenn is adamant that they can't just leave them to die and Tara uh, calls out to the car and a few people recognize her voice and call back. In the end, Rick gives... Rick gives in and hatches a plan to get them out, but Carol, who is nearby, realizes that Rick and the group won't leave the people in tra train car B behind. She also realizes that they don't have enough time, and both walkers and cannibals are closing in on their location to kill them, so she catapults explosives from afar to destroy the train car and kill everyone inside, with no one knowing it was her. Jesus, Carol, my gosh! Tara and Glenn are clearly very upset at this, but Rick actually seems glad that it happened, and then he gets them all to ex all to escape, and Carol escapes as well. Then, of course, uh, Rick says that uh, they should go back and kill all the cannibals with the group disagreeing, and everyone was re reunited with Carol, and then the episode actually ends with Tyrese bringing Judith uh, back to Rick, which is especially emotional in my rewrite, since he saved Rick da Rick's daughter when he didn't have to, while Rick left his daughter for him with him to die back in season 3. Man, what a great guy Tyrese is. Hope nothing bad happens to him. Anyway, in the eps in episode 11, it starts with Rick writing No Sanctuary on the signs, telling people not to go to Terminus, uh, uh, with the group going off together. Rick would thank Carol for what she did and welcome her back into the group, but Carol would tell him that she hasn't really changed and that she killed Li Lizzie and all the people in the train car B. But Rick, having clearly changed from before himself, says that it was a good thing that, that she killed all the people in the train car so that they didn't all end up uh, dying to try to save them, and that he wanted to kill them himself. And he tells Carol that uh, this will just be between the two of them, and Glenn and Tara won't know. However, after Tyrese reveals to the group that Carol killed Karen and David, Sasha, who, already, who also knew them pretty well, is extremely angry at Carol and threatens to kill her. But Tyrese ultimately talks her out of it, saying that more bloodshed isn't necessary. 
Then things go about the same as they do in the original series with them finding Gabriel and coming back to his church with them. And also the show uh, cut a conversation between Gabriel and Eugene from the comics where they, where they debate about religion. And I'm keeping that in because it's funny. And they go out on a food bank run. But in my version, it's Oscar, uh, who is Bob in my rewrite. But he doesn't get bitten. Uh, the group doesn't. The group doesn't uh, soak themselves in old water that is filled with walkers and instead try to get the food out without going in, but Oscar ends up falling in trying to protect Sasha, but he seems to be alright afterwards, you know, not having gotten bit, unlike in the original. Some mysterious people are seen following Rick and the group, and Rick gets back and sees You'll Burn for This written on Gabriel's church. And then the episode ends with a raincoat figure from the staff, with the staff, seeing the No Sanctuary sign, and it being revealed that it was Morgan, now on Rick's tail. In episode 12, things would play out very similar to how they do in the original, with Rick threatening Gabriel, Abraham getting everyone on board with going to Washington. There were more scenes of the group bonding and really getting to know each other, which really wasn't shown that much in the original, which led me to not really believing the connection that Rosita, Eugene, and Abraham had to Rick's group. Daryl would be telling Maggie what happened while, she, while he was with Beth, with Carol and Daryl, uh, and while Carol and Daryl are out by themselves. Carol asked Daryl whether Beth seemed to be relieved after he saved her from killing herself, and he says that she got mad at him, which is worrying to Carol, who says that Beth is still weak. Then, of course, the car with the cross comes and they go after it. Meanwhile, back with the group, Oscar starts feeling not so good and goes outside the church, sobbing and saying, please no. Eugene is also out there taking a piss and Oscar goes to him, uh, killing a walker that comes toward him, asking what he's doing out there all by himself without protection, with Eugene asking if he can't take a piss by himself without Abraham being there. But you know how Eugene would have said it. Classic Eugene. Uh, but then the both of them end up getting captured by the cannibals. Yes, Eugene also ends up getting captured in my rewrite. It cuts back to the cannibals' camp, of course, and Bob having his leg munched on, with Eugene being tied up, and Gareth saying that he's going to provide a big meal for them later. However, then Oscar starts laughing, asking if they checked his body for bites, and they say they did. But then he, but then he tells them that he has other wounds, one from the prison... One from when the prison got attacked that just keeps opening up, and then he tells them about how he got face deep in walker infested water. He has been trying to convince himself that everything was fine, but he couldn't deny the fact that he was getting a f having a fever coming onto him, and his bones were aching, and he was having the same symptoms people get from walker bites. As the cannibals start to realize one by one that Oscar was already infected, they start freaking out, and the episode ends with Oscar screaming, Tain and meat! before getting knocked out. Can't say it the way, uh. It was said, <clears throat> I can't, I can't, uh, I can't replicate Bob's classic tainted meat scene. Anyway, so yeah, uh, in my version, uh, you know, Oscar, you know, he does die from getting infected at the food bank, but it would actually be playing on the fact that, you know, you can get, uh, infected from, uh, infected through the bloodstream and, you know, he would, uh, he would get infected through his wound, basically, from being in the walker-infested water. Anyway, in episode 13, it would start out with the cannibals uh, talking to Eugene, with uh, him begging for his life, and them pressing him on how he, was, uh, how he has so much weight. Gareth says that he must have had a lot of people feeding him, protecting him, and dying for him, and questions him whether he is just bullshitting about how him being able to stop the walkers, but saying that it's pointless now anyway, since he is be going to become their lunch, with him begging for mercy, of course. <clears throat> then they uh, lock Eugene in a secure location inside the school and leave a bunch of walkers there to stop anyone trying to rescue him. And they take Bob and go back with the, go back to the church. Of course, people there start freaking out about what to do with four of their people missing. And since Eugene gets capture, captured in my version, Abraham demands that they rescue him immediately. Then Rick tells him that they can't risk going outside with people disappearing, and they actually get into a physical confrontation, with Abraham clearly gaining the upper hand, telling Rick that he's a twig compared to him. But then Rick starts biting his hand, and, and Abraham humorously freaks out at Rick for doing so, with Rick saying, it's not going to be your hand next time. <laughs> Please, Rick, don't lose control and bite out his throat. God damn. Then they hear music playing outside and see Oscar tied up, mouth duct tape, knocked out, and missing a leg, with the music drawing a bunch of walkers to the church. In my version of events, the cannibals don't just drop Oscar off and leave. Instead, they use him as bait, and then they go up into the trees to snipe anyone trying to leave the church to rescue Oscar. The group tries pretty much everything they can to make sure he is safe while not leaving the church and whittling down their ammo to try to keep the walkers off him from afar. 
He ends up make, waking up uh, during this ordeal and tries to signal for them to leave leave him since he's already dead, but he can't because he has duct tape over his mouth. Eventually, the group is able to use the rope to successfully get Oscar inside the church, uh, but and the music keeps attracting the dead, and they surround the church with everyone panicking as to what to do. And, of course, the uh, cannibals still surrounding them while in the trees, and they don't know their location. Then, of course, it's revealed that Bob has been infected, to which Sa- Sasha is incredibly saddened over. Rick and Abraham get into another argument about what to do, and after Oscar tells the group that uh, Daryl and Carol weren't captured by the cannibals and drove off, Rick says that they need to exterminate the cannibals and stay, to which Abraham responds that they need to grab Eugene and leave as soon as possible. Like in the original show, Glenn makes a deal with Abraham to take Maggie and Tara uh, to go with him to Washington, and Rick hatches a plan to defeat the cannibals. In, ep- in the finale, episode 14, Rick realizes that the cannibals aren't just going to pack up and leave, so he has the group construct a makeshift, co- makeshift cover to shield his fighters from the bullets that the cannibals would rain down upon them after they try to leave the church. He cuts through the floorboards and avoids the walkers uh, outside by having them drawn to the front of the church and then escaping with his fighters underneath, carrying the cover over their over all their heads, but while leaving Carl, Judith, and the other non-combatants inside the church surrounded by walkers. Leaving the walkers there actually serves as protection so that the cannibals won't go and attack the church. However, Gareth takes Rick's bait, allowing them to escape as he thinks they are going back to his camp that they gave Bob the location of, and then lead and then they lead the walkers away from the church so that he can kill the remaining people inside it. And then things out pretty much exactly like then things play out pretty much exactly like how they do in the original, with Gareth thinking got the jump on them, but uh and Judith starts crying. But then it's revealed that Rick and his fighters didn't just leave, and they came back waiting for Gareth and his men to give away their locations. They slaughter them all, and Abraham and some other members of the group go back to get Eugene and manage to find him and save his life by killing all the walkers at the school. And then it cuts back to Oscar dying, and in his last moments with Rick, thanking him for everything he did for him and Oscar doing the same. Then he would talk with Sasha, uh... And telling her that for so long he didn't care whether he lived or died, and it was just cruel fate that he was dying right at the moment where he was finally starting to enjoy life again. He thanks Sasha for being in his life with what little time he has left, and tells her to live her own life afterwards and not get caught up with his death. His last words to her are, you just gotta keep keeping on. Then Oscar is buried, Abraham and his crew go off to Washington, and the post credit scene of the finale is Daryl showing up again without Carol, and with Noah, who he says might be able to help them find Bath. Beth. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of part two of my rewrite for The Walking Dead. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe. This has been the Aromantic Shipper. Be sure to tune in for part three coming out next, where Negan will be making his grand entrance. And always remember, just because you can't feel love doesn't mean you shouldn't want other people to. Bye!